Welcome to Get Started with Lightroom CC, Adobe's beginner tutorial series designed to help you use Lightroom CC, which is Adobe's cloud-centric photo service that's a complete package for editing, organizing, storing, and sharing your photos. Now, Lightroom CC is not just an app. Instead, it's an ecosystem, or you might think of it as a family of apps that you can use across different devices, computers, mobile devices, the web, even Apple TV. And here's the point to remember when you're trying to get a grasp on how it all works. The whole Lightroom CC ecosystem revolves around one central point, the cloud. If you want to work with a photo in Lightroom CC, you first have to add that photo to the Lightroom CC ecosystem. In this lesson, I'll show you how to do that in Lightroom CC on a computer, although keep in mind that you can add photos to Lightroom CC from a mobile device or from the web, too. We're going to add the sample files for this tutorial, which you can download from the Adobe web page for this tutorial. But what I'm about to show you applies to adding any photos to the Lightroom CC desktop app. When you first launch Lightroom CC on your computer, don't be surprised if you see some photos already in Lightroom CC. Photos that are in the cloud, like this photo that I added to the Lightroom app on my iPhone, should automatically show up in Lightroom CC on your computer, too. Let's take a quick look around the interface of the Lightroom CC desktop app to give you a sense of the layout and where everything is. Over on the left is a column with options that you'll use when you're reviewing and organizing your photos. Here, you can choose which group of photos to see, whether that's all your photos or those you've just recently added, or you can even choose photos by date. And here, you can choose photos you put in an album or create a new album. You can hide and show this column by clicking the My Photos icon, the one that looks like a file box over here. You can view your photos in a few different ways in Lightroom CC. When you want to see lots of photos at once, you'll like the grid view. Make sure you've selected the source of photos that you want to view. That may be all photos, or recently added, or by date. Or, if you're following along with the sample files for this tutorial, choose the album of sample files that we made when we first imported these files into Lightroom CC. You can switch between views down at the bottom of the screen in the toolbar. The first icon there is a grid view called Photo Grid, and that's what we're looking at now. Photo Grid displays your photos in a grid pattern like this with no borders or information around the images, so you can focus on just your photographs. In this view, you can quickly see which photos are vertical, which are horizontal, and which are square, or any other aspect ratio. One of the most exciting things that you can do in Lightroom CC is to use it to improve your photographs. And the editing controls in Lightroom CC are designed to help you do just that. They're both powerful in terms of what they let you do, and at the same time, they're presented in a streamlined way that makes them simple to discover and to use. This lesson is an overview of the editing controls and techniques in Lightroom CC. If you're following along with the sample files for this tutorial, or with your own photos, add those to Lightroom CC as explained in the first tutorial in this series. To remind you, download the sample files from the tutorial page and then click the Add Photos button in Lightroom CC. Navigate to the sample files for this tutorial, tutorial number two in this Get Started series. Select the Sample Files folder and then click the Review for Import button on a Mac or the Choose Folder button on Windows. If you're someone who likes applying filters to photos in different mobile apps, then I'm pretty sure you're going to like the editing presets in Lightroom CC, which you'll find here in the desktop app and on the mobile app as well. They give you a quick way to change the look of a photo, and as we'll see in this lesson, they also come in handy as a way to learn what different editing controls are capable of. If you're following along with the sample files for this tutorial, go to either the 2-2 album that you made during import or up to all photos, and select this photo of the roses. Then go over and click the editing icon, or just press E on your keyboard, to go into the editing workspace. 
And to set up for this lesson, come down to the menu with the three dots on the right. The last lesson in this tutorial covered the basics of using presets on your photos. Now let's take that one step further and learn how to create your own preset that you can use on other photos too. Select a photo from the 2-2 album that you made at the beginning of this tutorial. If you're in the editing workspace now, you can select this photo from the film strip, or you can select it here in the grid view, and then go up and click the editing icon. I'm going to open my presets by going to the bottom of the screen and clicking presets. I'd like to make a preset to bring out the warm tones, like the pinks and golds, in this urban scene. To save time, I'll start with an existing preset. I'll go to the Presets panel, and I'm going to open the Creative category of Presets. And from there, I'm going to apply the Warm Shadows preset. I like the way that looks, but I'd like to change it a little bit, opening up the darker areas of the photo. So I'll go over to the Light panel in the column on the right, and I'm going to drag the Shadows slider over to the right. And I like that look better. So now I want to save this as my own preset. To do that, I'll go to the top of the Presets panel, In this tutorial, we'll be diving into the editing controls that you'll use most in Lightroom CC. And in this lesson, we'll be focusing on the powerful lighting controls. If you're following along with the sample files, add them to Lightroom CC. And then, select this photo, and press E on your keyboard, or go over to the right and click the Edit icon. That takes you to the Edit workspace, and pops out this column of editing controls. The light panel at the top of this column contains controls for adjusting what it says, lighting. If you need a reminder of what a particular slider in this panel does, you can just hover over it and a tooltip appears with these animated sliders that can be really helpful. Now, sometimes all you have to do in this panel is click one button, the auto button. That automatically moves the sliders in just this panel to where Lightroom CC thinks they should be to improve the lighting in the photo. Once you have this start, you then could come in and tweak some of these sliders. Maybe you want this to be brighter, for example. When you're working with a photo that needs more or less intensity in its colors, you can use the Vibrance and or the Saturation sliders in Lightroom CC's color panel. If you're following along with the sample files, select this photo and then press E on your keyboard or click the Edit icon. In the Color panel, come down to Vibrance and Saturation. Let's take a look at Saturation first. Dragging the Saturation slider toward the left decreases the intensity of all the colors in a photo, and dragging it to the right increases the intensity. Now, let's say that I want the blue in this photo to be more intense. If I drag to the right until I like the color of the blue, I find that the color of the model's skin and her red socks are becoming oversaturated. So this is a case where you might want to use the Vibrant slider instead. Let's put the Saturation slider back to zero by double-clicking the circle on the Saturation slider, and then we'll go to the Vibrant slider. Now here, if I drag to the right, I can get the blue to where I want it without oversaturating the model's skin or her socks. And that's often the case because the Vibrant slider does a more subtle job of affecting color intensity. Increasing the Vibrant slider will have the greatest effect on colors that need saturation the most. And the Vibrant slider protects colors that are typically found in skin tones, so they don't become oversaturated. So now that you know the difference between Vibrance and saturation, give these sliders a try on your own photos or on some of the other sample photos too. This tutorial is about cropping, straightening, and correcting perspective in your photos. In this lesson, we'll cover cropping a photo. If you're following along with the sample files for this tutorial, add them to Lightroom CC as explained in the first tutorial in this Get Started series. If you need a quick reminder how that's done, click the Add Photos button here and navigate to the sample files you downloaded from the Adobe page for this tutorial. 
In the Import Preview window that opens, you have the option to make a new album for the Tutorial 4 files as you add them. Click Add Photos there and you'll be back in one of the grid views. For this lesson, select this photo of a feather and click the Edit button over here or press E on your keyboard. Over on the right, you'll see the Crop Tool. Click the Crop Tool or press the letter C on your keyboard to open the Crop Tool options. Cropping a photo is useful to remove unwanted content at the edges or to change the shape of the photo, for example to make a photo square, or most often to improve the overall composition. Let's see how this photo looks if we crop away the extra white space at the top of the photo. When you select the Crop Tool, a crop box appears around the photo. Click any edge of the crop box and drag inward to make the box smaller. Dragging outward makes it bigger. Notice that no matter how big or small I make this crop box, it stays the same shape and I can't just drag one of the edges separately from the others. That's because over in the Crop Options, this lock icon is locked. If I click the lock icon to unlock it, now I can come back into the photo and drag any edge freely. 